What would you do if no one was watching? For four job candidates, a blind beggar outside their prospective employer's doors was just another person in need, or so they thought. But in this test of character, they'd soon learn that their greatest interview challenge had already begun. Bright City's autumn mornings had a sharpness to them. The skyline, a jagged silhouette against the muted light, seemed to whisper tales of ambition and resilience. For Mara Anderson, the woman who controlled much of this city's pulse from her high-rise office, it was just another day, a new challenge awaiting her attention. Mara, a striking woman in her mid-forties with skin as smooth and deep as polished mahogany, had grown accustomed to the weight of decision-making, and she bore it gracefully. Her presence was commanding yet warm, an unspoken invitation that made people feel both at ease and in awe. This morning, as she leaned back in her sleek leather chair, her gaze fixed out the window, an idea formed. Her assistant Jordan, a quick-witted young man with an instinct for Mara's needs, noticed her contemplative expression. What's on your mind, Mara? He asked, a hint of curiosity in his voice. She tilted her head, her eyes brightening with a spark of mischief. We're hiring for some crucial positions, Jordan, and I keep thinking, skills alone aren't enough. We need people with integrity, compassion. Jordan nodded. Mara's values were well known within the company, Massachusetts International, a conglomerate that had thrived not just through innovation, but through Mara's unique approach to leadership. So what are you suggesting? He ventured, sensing that she was about to unveil a plan. A slow smile spread across Mara's face, and she tapped her manicured fingers rhythmically on her desk. I want to test them in a way that goes beyond any interview. Over the next few days, Mara's plan took shape. Her HR director, Linda, was initially skeptical, even hesitant, but Mara's vision was unyielding. Linda, she explained patiently, I want candidates who can see people, really see them, and I want to see if they'll act with kindness, even when it's inconvenient. And so, with meticulous planning, Mara prepared herself to step into a role far removed from her usual one. She ditched her fitted suit for faded, worn clothes and donned a pair of oversized sunglasses, which obscured her piercing gaze. Her hands, typically adorned with rings and polished nails, held a tin cup, scratched and dull. She even added an old cap, pulling it low over her face to complete the transformation. In the bustling heart of Bright City, just outside her own building, Mara Anderson would sit as a blind beggar, waiting to see the true nature of those seeking to join her company. Mara settled into her new role just as the morning sun began to filter through the high-rise buildings, casting a cold, silvery light over the city. She huddled closer to herself, pulling her tattered jacket around her shoulders as pedestrians walked past, some glancing at her with mild curiosity, others avoiding her entirely. She was becoming accustomed to this new, invisible world, one where people looked through her, not at her. The first candidate, Lottie, approached from the corner of Fifth Avenue, her stride confident, her chin high. She was dressed impeccably in a tailored blazer that spoke of ambition and careful preparation. As Lottie neared, Mara could feel her gaze. Lottie hesitated, her eyes flicking from Mara to the entrance of the building then to the tin cup Mara held loosely in her hands. Lottie's face softened, and for a moment it seemed she might say something, but then her gaze landed on the modest stack of bills in Mara's cup, a hesitation catching her in place. The glint of money stirred something in her eyes, and her fingers twitched against her designer bag. She let out a low sigh, then seemed to come to a decision. With a quick glance around, Lottie muttered under her breath, I shouldn't. I don't need it. And brushed past without another look, quickening her pace toward the entrance. As she disappeared through the revolving doors, Mara felt a pang. Not disappointment exactly, but something like a small tug of recognition. She had known people like Lottie before, people who hovered on the edge of self-interest and conscience. In the corporate world, people often grappled with these moments of choice and Mara wondered if Lottie even realized the opportunity she had passed by. A short while later, Jared arrived, checking his watch as he walked. Tall and wiry with an air of impatience, Jared barely slowed as he approached. 
His gaze lingered on Mara, narrowing slightly at the sight of the money in her cup. Strange place to sit, he muttered to himself, looking over his shoulder as if checking for cameras or some hidden observer. Mara sensed his suspicion, the way he glanced at her sunglasses as though he could see through her disguise if he just stared hard enough. After a moment he shrugged, reaching into his pocket and pulling out a few coins. He let them drop with a metallic clink, his lips pressed into a thin line, before heading inside without another word. The coins settled atop the bills Mara had planted in the cup, a stark contrast that didn't go unnoticed. Elaine came next, her footsteps light, almost playful. There was a quickness to her gaze, a spark of curiosity that caught Mara's attention immediately. Elaine looked at her with a boldness the others hadn't, even crouching slightly as if to see Mara's face beneath the cap. Hey there, she said, her tone friendly, but with an undercurrent of something calculating. Her eyes darted to the tin cup, her gaze resting on the cash with a flicker of amusement. Got a bit of luck today, huh? Without waiting for a response, Elaine reached into her own pocket, pulling out a dollar. But as she leaned in to drop it, her fingers deftly slipped a few of Mara's bills into her own pocket. It was a movement so smooth, so practiced, that Mara almost admired her skill. Well, you know, Elaine muttered under her breath. A little redistribution never hurt anyone, before she winked and sauntered toward the building. Mara felt a quiet anger settle within her. This was the very attitude she had hoped to weed out, the casual selfishness that justified taking advantage of those less fortunate. Her fingers tightened around the tin cup, but she kept her silence. There would be time to confront Elaine. Properly. Finally, Ethan appeared. Unlike the others, he seemed almost invisible at first glance. Dressed simply in a navy suit that looked like it had seen better days, he had an understated demeanor, the kind that made people overlook him. But Mara noticed his careful steady gait as he approached. He stopped a few feet from her hesitating, his gaze softening as he looked at the tin cup in her hands. Without a word, he took out a few bills, crumpled and modest, and placed them gently into the cup. Mara felt a warmth in his gesture, an empathy that required no audience or reward. Ethan didn't linger, didn't ask questions, didn't expect anything in return. He simply met her gaze briefly, offered a soft, I hope this helps, and continued toward the building. In that fleeting moment, Mara felt an unexpected swell of pride for him, a stranger. For this test, Ethan had passed with something more than just kindness. He'd shown heart. The morning air grew colder, and Mara pulled her jacket tighter, her fingers wrapped around the tin cup as the city's energy pulsed around her. She waited, letting herself disappear into her role. She wanted this moment to be authentic, to see how people would act when they thought no one was watching. One by one, her test subjects would pass, and she would catch glimpses of who they truly were. A few minutes after Ethan left, the rhythm of hurried footsteps grew louder as Lottie returned from her brief detour to the coffee shop. Her earlier hesitation had lingered in Mara's mind, and now she watched as Lottie approached again, her eyes flicking back to the cup. Inside Lottie's mind, a debate raged. This job could be life-changing, she reminded herself. I've worked so hard for this. Endless late nights living paycheck to paycheck. Today is my chance. I can't get distracted. But something kept tugging at her thoughts. Her glance darted to the beggar woman's tin cup, and she felt a flicker of guilt for having walked past before. It wasn't like her to ignore people in need. You're stressed, she told herself. Focus on yourself for once. Lottie dug into her purse, her fingers brushing over the smooth leather of her wallet. A few crumpled bills nestled there, and she could easily afford to spare one. Yet, as she held a dollar in her hand, she hesitated. Why would a blind beggar have so much money sitting out in the open? The thought crept into her mind, casting doubt over her original intention. Anxiety prickled in her gut, and she took a shaky breath. She slipped the dollar back into her wallet and closed her purse tightly. With a final, reluctant glance at Mara, she continued inside, but a tinge of shame followed her, lingering like a shadow as she walked through the building's revolving doors. Mara noted the tension in Lottie's face, 
the conflicted emotions she hadn't been able to hide. Lottie's hesitation told a story of fear, of scarcity perhaps, and of self-preservation. Mara understood it. She had once felt it herself, long ago when she had to fight for every opportunity. But still, a part of her felt saddened by Lottie's choice. As Lottie disappeared into the building, Jared came into view, hands stuffed into his pockets as he checked his reflection in the nearby glass door. He was clearly trying to steel himself for the interview, shoulders squared and chin lifted with a show of confidence. When he finally noticed Mara sitting on the ground, his expression shifted, curiosity, a glint of suspicion, and finally something close to irritation. Jared had been skeptical since he was a child, taught to keep a tight grip on his belongings and trust no one. His father's words echoed in his mind. People take advantage of weakness. He eyed Mara and her tin cup with the bills arranged so neatly, like bait. Is this some kind of trick? But as he looked at the bills, Jared felt a pang of guilt creeping in. Don't be paranoid, he scolded himself. His fingers brushed the coins in his pocket, and he felt the weight of them, the hard edges digging into his palm. All right, he muttered, dropping the coins in the cup with a hint of reluctance. His eyes met Mara's sunglasses for a fleeting moment, and he caught his reflection. Someone who cared just enough to offer a little but who couldn't afford to care too much. With a quick nod to himself, Jared walked inside, his mind already shifting back to the interview. He told himself he'd done something good, that the clinking coins were enough to ease the nagging discomfort in his conscience. Yet as he headed toward the lobby, a small part of him felt hollow, as though he had missed an opportunity to do something real, something that mattered. Elaine came next, her bright eyes sweeping over Mara with an intense curiosity that barely concealed her cunning. Elaine thrived on attention, and her gaze rested on Mara longer than the others, as if she sensed there was more here than met the eye. Elaine crouched, a hint of mischief glinting in her eyes. Busy day, huh? she asked, not expecting a response but amused by her own audacity. The sight of the bills had triggered a different instinct in her. Not empathy, but opportunity. She won't notice, Elaine thought with a smirk. And anyway, I need the cash more than she does. In a swift motion, Elaine reached into Mara's cup, her fingers brushing the bills as she quickly pulled out a few and tucked them into her coat pocket. Her heart raced slightly, a thrill coursing through her at the risk. She looked back at Mara, watching for any reaction, but the blind beggar remained still, seemingly oblivious. For Elaine, this felt almost exhilarating, a reminder of the thrill she often felt in situations where the rules could be bent in her favor. She relished her own cleverness, the way she could slip in and out of these small infractions with such ease. It's harmless, she rationalized. It's just a bit of fun. And with a breezy laugh to herself, she continued toward the building, feeling oddly energized. Inside, Elaine let her fingers drift to the hidden bills, almost as if she were holding a prize. She felt a sense of victory, a secret that buoyed her confidence. But even as she walked, a small, unwelcome thought lingered at the back of her mind. What if someone had seen? The final candidate, Ethan, approached without much fanfare. He looked at Mara with a quiet compassion that was rare in Bright City, where people's gazes typically skittered past beggars as though they were invisible. Ethan, though, held his gaze steady, a softness in his eyes. He knelt down beside her, taking a few bills from his own wallet and adding them to her tin cup. Take care, okay? He murmured gently, his voice almost a whisper. There was no pity in his tone, no assumption that she was helpless. Just simple, heartfelt kindness. Inside his mind, Ethan thought of his mother a woman who had taught him to always treat others with respect. You never know, she told him, who might be an angel in disguise. Her words stayed with him as he rose, giving Mara a nod of encouragement before walking toward the building. For Mara, that small moment of genuine compassion felt like sunlight breaking through clouds. She didn't need to see his face to understand his sincerity. It was in the warmth of his voice, the way he didn't linger or look back as though he wanted nothing in return. Ethan's gesture was pure and unselfish, 
a rare gift in a world where so many people measured their actions by what they could gain. As the last candidate disappeared into the building, Mara felt a deep, settled calm. She had learned what she needed to know. The upcoming interview would reveal much more about each candidate, but already their reactions had told her more than any resume or rehearsed answer ever could. With a slow, steady breath, Mara rose from her position on the ground, feeling the stiffness in her legs. She took a moment to smooth her jacket, slipping the tin cup into her bag, before heading toward the side entrance to transform back into her CEO self. Each step felt purposeful, a reminder of why she had started this test in the first place. In a world where so much was transactional, where kindness was often an afterthought, she had found what she was looking for. Now, it was time to bring them all face to face with the truth. Back in her office, Mara underwent a transformation. She changed out of the worn, scruffy clothes she'd used as a disguise and into her customary tailored suit. With each piece of her professional attire, she felt herself becoming once more the formidable CEO known throughout Bright City. Not just a business leader, but a pioneer in compassionate leadership. She pulled her hair back, checked her reflection, and satisfied, walked toward the interview room. As she entered, the candidates sat in a row, their faces betraying a mix of confidence, nervousness, and determination. The earlier encounters had left their marks on each of them, subtle traces of guilt, defiance, or satisfaction etched into their expressions. Mara's gaze swept over them, and for a brief moment, no one spoke. She sensed the familiar hush of anticipation filling the room. Mara offered them a warm, practiced smile. Good morning, she began her tone professional but gentle. Thank you all for being here today. As you know, we're here to assess your potential fit for the open positions at MA International. What you may not know, she paused, letting the tension build, is that the interview process actually began before you entered this room. The candidates exchanged puzzled glances, a few eyebrows raised in confusion. Lottie shifted slightly in her seat, her posture stiffening. Jared's eyes narrowed, as though trying to decipher her words. Elaine's lips curved into a faint, nervous smile, while Ethan simply listened, his expression calm and attentive. You may have noticed a blind woman sitting outside the building entrance this morning, Mara continued, her gaze resting on each of them in turn. I wanted to see how each of you would respond to someone in need. That woman, she said, removing her sunglasses with a graceful but firm gesture, was me. A stunned silence settled over the room, Lottie's face drained of color, her hands clenched tightly in her lap. Jared's mouth opened slightly in surprise, while Elaine's eyes widened in shock, a hand instinctively brushing over her coat pocket where the stolen bills still lay. Ethan, who hadn't expected this twist but had nothing to hide, met Mara's gaze with calm acceptance, a faint hint of admiration flickering in his eyes. Mara held their attention, her voice steady and unwavering. I believe in hiring people not just for their skills, but for their character. And today, I saw each of you as you truly are, away from polished resumes and rehearsed answers. She turned to Lottie first. Lottie, I noticed that you hesitated. You seemed conflicted, as if something inside was pushing you to help, but you chose to walk on. Lottie's cheeks flushed, her gaze fixed on the floor, too ashamed to meet Mara's eyes. I... Lottie began, her voice barely above a whisper. I just thought... I mean, I, I didn't know. She struggled for words, feeling the weight of her own conscience bearing down on her. Mara watched her, her expression compassionate but firm, allowing the silence to linger until Lottie fell silent, her face lined with regret. Next... Mara turned to Jared. Jared, I saw you analyze the situation, weighing the options in your mind. Jared shifted uncomfortably in his seat, a hint of defiance flickering in his eyes as he looked up to meet her gaze. I gave something, he said, his voice defensive. It wasn't much, but... I mean, who leaves that much money in a cup? I thought it was some kind of trick. He trailed off, his voice faltering under the intensity of Mara's scrutiny. Mara nodded, her gaze never wavering. 
You did give, Jared, and I commend you for that. But I could see that doubt held you back. A genuine act of kindness should be given freely, not out of fear or suspicion. Jared swallowed, a faint blush creeping up his neck. He glanced away, biting his lip as he absorbed her words. Then, Mara turned to Elaine, who seemed unable to sit still. Her face was flushed, her fingers nervously tapping against the arm of her chair. Mara's voice softened, but her tone carried a weight that made Elaine wince slightly. Elaine, she began. You made a different choice entirely. You took money from someone you thought couldn't see you, someone you believed wouldn't notice. Elaine opened her mouth to protest, but no words came out. Her face turned a deep shade of red as she looked down, her fingers fumbling over her coat pocket where the bills rested like a guilty secret. She stammered, I... I didn't think it would matter. I mean, I thought... I just thought... Mara raised a hand, silencing her. What you thought was that you could take advantage of a vulnerable person without consequence, and that, Elaine, reveals a lack of integrity that's not only disappointing but deeply concerning. Elaine's face crumpled, the truth of Mara's words striking her with a force she hadn't anticipated. She sat back in her chair, shoulders slumped, as the weight of her actions settled around her. Finally, Mara turned to Ethan, her expression softening into a genuine smile. Ethan, she said, her voice warm, you chose to give without any hesitation, without expecting anything in return. Your gesture was one of pure compassion, and that speaks volumes about the kind of person you are. Ethan nodded humbly, his gaze steady. It was the right thing to do, he replied simply, as though there were no other possible response. Mara's eyes softened as she addressed the group as a whole. Compassion, kindness, and empathy are not just words we put in a mission statement here at MA International. They're values we live by. Today's test was a way to see if those qualities exist in the people we hire, if they're values you carry with you, even when no one is watching. The candidates sat in silence, each one processing her words in their own way. Lottie looked down, the shame evident in her expression. Jared's jaw was set, his eyes troubled as he wrestled with his own doubts. Elaine's face was drawn, her expression one of guilt and embarrassment as though she had been exposed in a way she hadn't expected. Only Ethan seemed at peace, his demeanor calm, accepting Mara's praise with a quiet dignity. After a moment, Mara took a deep breath and continued. As CEO, I want to build a team that reflects not just the best skills, but the best qualities humanity has to offer. And I believe that these qualities, integrity, empathy, selflessness, are far more valuable than any technical skill you might bring. She let her gaze settle on each of them, giving them a moment to absorb the weight of her words. Ethan, I'd like to offer you the position. I think you'll make a valuable addition to our team. A soft murmur rippled through the room. Ethan's eyes widened, surprise and gratitude mingling in his expression as he nodded. Thank you, he said quietly, his voice full of genuine appreciation. As for the others... Mara's silence spoke volumes. The disappointment was palpable, each of them feeling the weight of her decision as a reflection of their own choices. Mara stood, offering them one last meaningful look. Thank you all for your time, she said finally. I hope today was a learning experience for each of you. The candidates rose, one by one, gathering their belongings as they prepared to leave. Jared offered a curt nod, his face set in a mask of forced calm while Lottie whispered a quick, thank you, her face still flushed with embarrassment. Elaine avoided Mara's gaze altogether. Her expression conflicted as she walked toward the door, the sting of disappointment etched into every step. Mara watched them go, feeling a strange mix of satisfaction and empathy. She had seen their potential and their flaws, but she also knew that they had each been given a chance to grow, to reflect on what truly mattered. And in the quiet of her office, as the echoes of their footsteps faded, Mara felt a deep, abiding sense of purpose, a reminder of why she had taken this unconventional path. In the end, the true value of the test wasn't in weeding out the candidates, but in offering them a mirror, a chance to see themselves as they truly were, 
and perhaps, she thought, as she prepared to welcome Ethan to the team, it was a reminder for her as well, a call to continue leading with compassion and unwavering commitment to her values. The elevator doors closed with a soft hum, and the candidates rode down in silence. The earlier confidence that had accompanied them on their way up had been replaced by a mix of discomfort, self-doubt, and for some, deep shame. Each of them was lost in their own thoughts, haunted by the unexpected test and the choices they had made. Lottie stood nearest to the door, her eyes fixed on her reflection in the polished metal. The young woman staring back at her didn't look quite as self-assured as she had that morning. She felt exposed. Her hesitation laid bare, not just to Mara, but to herself. I'm better than this, she thought, her mind racing over the morning's events. Or at least I thought I was. The memory of her hesitation gnawed at her, bringing up past moments when she had chosen self-preservation over compassion. Moments that, at the time, she had justified as necessary. She'd worked hard for every opportunity, every inch of progress. But now, she wondered if her relentless focus on her own survival had chipped away at her empathy. Lottie clenched her fists, a resolve forming within her. She would not let this moment define her. I want to be someone who acts, not someone who hesitates. She made a promise to herself then, a vow that her future decisions would be different, that next time she would reach out without hesitation, without second guessing. The elevator dinged softly, and Lottie exited, her steps more purposeful than before, each one carrying her closer to the person she wanted to be. In the opposite corner, Jared leaned against the wall, his gaze dark and unfocused. He was still reeling, his mind replaying Mara's words, her calm yet piercing description of his actions. You gave out of fear, she had said, her voice echoing in his mind, fear and suspicion. He felt his jaw clench, a flicker of anger rising within him, not at Mara but at himself. She had been right, he had let his skepticism guide him, had approached even a moment of kindness as though it were a transaction a calculation of risk versus reward. Jared had always prided himself on being practical and realistic. His father had taught him early on to keep his guard up to avoid being a fool, but Mara's words made him question if he had taken that lesson too far, if his cautiousness had hardened into something ugly. Maybe I'm missing something, he admitted to himself, the thought unsettling yet oddly liberating. He glanced out of the elevator, watching Lottie's determined stride as she disappeared into the lobby. Jared felt a pang of admiration for her resolve, her willingness to confront her own shortcomings. As he stepped out of the elevator, he felt the stirrings of a quiet determination. Maybe it's time to let go of some of this armor, he thought. Maybe it's time to start trusting. Just a little. Beside him, Elaine stared down at her hands, which were still clenched over her coat pocket where she had hidden the stolen bills. The money felt like a weight, a reminder of her own impulsive choice. A choice that had now left her humiliated, ashamed, and questioning everything she thought she knew about herself. How could I have been so careless? She thought, her face flushed with embarrassment. I only took a few bills. It was harmless, wasn't it? But the more she thought about it, the flimsier her justifications became. Mara had seen through her so effortlessly, had held up a mirror to a part of herself that Elaine had always dismissed, rationalized as harmless fun, a bit of mischief. Yet now, as she sat with the truth of her actions, she realized that her casual disregard had been far more than just a small, innocent impulse. It had revealed something she hadn't wanted to see, a disregard for others, an instinct to take rather than to give. Elaine's cheeks burned with shame, but beneath it, she felt a strange, unexpected gratitude. Maybe this is what I needed, she thought, the insight coming to her with a mix of relief and bitterness. Maybe this was my wake-up call. As the elevator doors opened onto the lobby, Elaine took a deep breath, stealing herself. She would return the money, find a way to make things right, and perhaps in time, she could learn to act with a kindness she'd long neglected. Last to step out was Ethan who moved with a quiet confidence, his mind calm yet thoughtful. The events of the morning had taken him by surprise, 
but Mara's words had felt like a confirmation of something he had always believed. The right thing to do is often the simplest choice, he reflected as he made his way through the lobby. He hadn't done anything remarkable, yet Mara's recognition had left him with a warmth that spread beyond the prospect of a new job. It was a reminder that kindness mattered, that even in a world where success was often measured by achievements and accolades, there was something fundamentally valuable in just being a decent person. He thought back to his mother, the one who had instilled in him the values he carried today. She'd often told him that true character wasn't about grand gestures, but about small, everyday choices, about being willing to act with compassion when no one was watching. As he stepped out into the street, Ethan felt a sense of peace. He looked up at the towering building behind him, grateful for the opportunity that awaited him, but even more grateful for the journey that had brought him here. He was ready to step into his new role, confident that he could bring his values with him, that he could be a part of something that aligned with his principles. Back in her office, Mara watched the street below, her gaze following the candidates as they left, each one carrying with them a piece of the lesson she had hoped to impart. In her own way, she felt a sense of responsibility for them, for the choices they would make going forward. She knew that each of them, in their own way, had been given a gift, not just of insight, but of a chance to change, to grow, to redefine themselves. And for Mara, that was the true purpose of leadership, not just to find the best people, but to help people discover the best within themselves. With a satisfied sigh, she turned away from the window, ready to begin the next chapter with Ethan by her side. He was the one who had shown her what she valued most, a quiet, unassuming strength of character that didn't need recognition to be real. For Mara, that was the kind of legacy she wanted to leave, not one of accolades or wealth, but a legacy of compassion, integrity, and above all, the courage to act with kindness, even when the world wasn't watching. Mara closed her office door, feeling a profound sense of satisfaction. The day had unfolded exactly as she had hoped, each candidate revealing their true self in ways that no resume or interview ever could. As she walked to her desk, she let her gaze linger on the photos that adorned her wall. Snapshots of MA International's humble beginnings, moments from charity events, and pictures of the employees who had helped build the company into the force it was today. Each photo was a piece of her story, a reminder of the values that had guided her from day one. She settled into her chair, fingers drumming softly on her desk as she reflected on the candidates she had met that day. Each had left with more than they had come in with, some with lessons, some with humility, and in Ethan's case, with an invitation to join her team. Mara knew that her approach might be unconventional, perhaps even controversial to some, but she had always believed that character mattered more than any credential. Today had reinforced that belief. As the afternoon sunlight streamed through her window, she found herself drifting back to her own journey, the long road that had brought her to this place of influence and responsibility. She thought of the obstacles she had overcome as a young black woman in the corporate world, the times when her integrity had been tested and the mentors who had taught her to lead with both heart and discipline. She had learned early on that kindness was not a weakness, but a strength, and that the most impactful leaders were those who didn't just expect greatness. They inspired it. Mara picked up a framed photograph from her desk. It was a picture of her mother, a woman who had raised her with an unshakable moral compass. Her mother's words echoed in her mind. Success isn't just about what you achieve, it's about how you live. Those words had shaped her entire philosophy, guiding her to build a company where employees were encouraged to bring their whole selves to work, where they were valued not just for what they did, but for who they were. She placed the photo back down, smiling softly. Today's test had been about more than just hiring the right person. It had been about reinforcing a culture a way of life at MA International. She wanted every person who walked through her doors to feel that they were a part of something meaningful, something that went beyond the daily grind of business. She wanted them to understand that in her company, kindness was currency, integrity was expected, and empathy was non-negotiable. Ethan's response had been a beacon of hope, 
a reminder that there were still people who acted out of genuine compassion, who didn't need to be watched or rewarded to do the right thing. She was confident that he would carry these values forward, inspiring others just as she hoped to inspire him. As she thought of the other candidates, a part of her hoped that the day's experience would stay with them too. She believed in second chances, in the power of self-reflection and growth. She imagined Lottie, grappling with her hesitation and perhaps finding strength in her decision to act with more courage in the future. She pictured Jared, learning to trust, loosening the armor he'd built to protect himself and opening himself up to vulnerability and connection. And she saw Elaine, feeling the weight of her actions, perhaps realizing that the thrill of bending the rules wasn't worth the price of her own integrity. Each of them had a choice just as she had once been given choices along her own path. And she knew that, ultimately, it was those choices, small, everyday decisions, that defined a person's legacy. Mara took a deep breath, feeling a wave of calm settle over her. Tomorrow would bring new challenges, new decisions, and, undoubtedly, new opportunities to uphold the values she held dear. But for now, she was content knowing that she was building something lasting, something that would outlive her, a company that was not just profitable, but purposeful. She stood, glancing once more at the photographs on her wall. They were not just reminders of her achievements, but markers of the lives she had touched, the community she had built, and the people she had empowered. In that moment, Mara knew that this was her true legacy, a commitment to compassion, a dedication to integrity, and the courage to act with empathy, no matter the cost. With a satisfied smile, she turned off the light and closed her office door, leaving behind a legacy that would continue to grow person by person, act by act, one choice at a time.